Amen. How many excited to be here this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, God's so good. Um, he's, he's amazing. He's wonderful. He's doing things right now. Uh, you know, it's so funny. I, I, after the election last year, I, I, not last year, uh, 2016, uh, I, got, I got so into it um, that I got too into it. And uh, so I just kind of just turned off the news for a year and a half. It's pretty much been amazing. Uh, I'll get on and check and make sure the world hasn't, you know, we're not in World War III, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, uh, you know, I've kind of turned it off, and it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Um, um, just, just focusing on God and not worrying about what's going on in the world. You know, uh, I do find out about what's the, what thing, things that are happening. Uh, but, but praying about what's happening instead of just consuming myself in a, in a continual cycle. I say that to say this. Uh, I, I want to know what God's doing in the world. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to spend my time focusing on what the enemy's doing yeah. in the world. You know, if we'll tap in, God is doing amazing stuff all the time. We can get discouraged and go like, oh, because we just get bogged down in our, our just day-to-day -day life. But we forget that God all over the world right now as we speak is doing amazing things. He's raising the dead. He's healing the sick. Right? He's, uh, he's, he's winning souls. He's, a, he's appearing to people in visions in Saudi Arabia and Syria and, and Afghanistan. It's, it, it is amazing. And so uh, it, it's an exciting time to be alive. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm excited to be alive. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 46. Because I was praying this week, um, I just got, you know, alone with the Lord and just said, God, what, what do you want to talk about this week? And I felt the Lord say, go to Isaiah 46. And I, I went there and read it, and it's, it's an amazing, uh, amazing chapter. And I think it's, a, it's an important word for us right now. Uh, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for who you are. For who you are. You're the, you're the way maker. You're the miracle worker. You're the promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness. It's just who you are, God. And, and, and you don't change. We change, but you don't. You don't, God. And you are just as amazing right now as you were 2,000 years ago, as you were 50 years ago. You are here in our midst right now, God. We honor you as God. We honor you in our hearts as God. We say you alone are God. And we ask, Holy Spirit, would you... Just help us to see you today. If we can just get a glimpse of you, just one glimpse, uh, it'll change our week. It'll change our life. Lord, it, it'll, it'll set us on the right course. And so we just ask that you just reveal to us, Holy Spirit, would you speak this morning? We don't need a sermon. We need you. We, we need your word. Holy Spirit, reveal your word to us, God. I pray that you'd stir us up today, God. Make us a people who are hungry for you, Lord. Make us a people who are desperate for you, God, that break out of just the mundane, just... Uh, uh, just a lukewarm life. God, I pray that you'd, you'd burn in our hearts this morning. Burn in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God in Isaiah 46. We're just going to go ahead and read the whole chapter uh, quickly and then uh, go, go into the message. The, the title of the message is, is The God Who Carries Us. The, the God Who Carries Us. In verse 1, uh, this is, of course, Isaiah you know, prophesying to... Uh, Israel, uh, the, the book of Isaiah is incredible. There, a lot of the messianic prophecies are in here. The prophecies about Jesus coming, amazing. This one in particular is, is just one of those kind of uh, uh, rebukes. It's kind of a nicer rebuke than some of the other chapters. So, so you guys are getting, getting out good today, all right? We're, we're doing one of the nice Isaiah chapters. Uh, and... Uh, and, but but, but, but it's, it's a rebuke, it's a challenge nonetheless. And, and so that's the context of, of what this is. It's just a, it's a word, it's a challenge, uh, a reminder to Israel. And, and Israel is a type of what? The church. Amen. So he's talking to you today, right? Uh, and so, so let's listen. In verse 1 he says, Bel bows down, ne Nebo stoops. Those are false gods, Babylonian false gods. Their idols are on beasts and livestock. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Uh, we'll try to get them up on the screens if, 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 if we can. It's, it, it's all good. Um, you can pull up your phones and Google Isaiah 46, and this amazing thing happens. 
it, it pops up. It's incredible. Um, <laughs> Bell bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols are on beast and livestock. These things, these things you carry, everybody say you carry, are born as burdens on weary beasts. They stoop. They bow down together. They cannot save the burden, but themselves go into captivity. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been born by me from before your birth, carried from your womb. Even to your old age, I am he. Come on. We got some people at old age in this who ain't ashamed to raise their hands because you are rocking. You are rocking. Amen. Hey, that, that, that's not the right slide, so it, it, it's all good. Sorry. Um, e- even to your old age, I will, I am he. To your gray hairs, I will carry. We got some gray hairs in here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We ain't going to be ashamed of those great hairs. I have made and I, I will bear, I will carry and will save. Verse 5, to whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be alike? Those who lavish gold from the purse and weigh out silver in the scales, hire a goldsmith and he makes it into a god. Then they fall down and worship. Of course, he's referring to idols there. Verse 7, they lift it to their shoulders. They carry it. Everybody say, they carry it. They set it in its place and it stands there. It cannot move from its place. If one cries to it, it does not answer or save him from his trouble. Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Transgressors, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. Everybody say, there is no other. other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Isn't this awesome? Verse 11, calling a bird of prey from the east. The man of my counsel from a far country, I have spoken and I'll bring it to pass. I have purposed it and I will do it. Last two verses. Verse 12, listen to me, you stubborn of heart. Come on, raise your hand if you're stubborn of heart sometimes. Who are far from from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off. How many of you glad he's not far off today? And my salvation will not delay. I will put my salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Man, it's, it's an amazing uh, chapter. We see it starting off here with these two gods. In, in verse 1, it says, Bell bows down, Nebo stoops. And, and uh, as I was reading the commentaries on this uh, this week, it's really, really interesting. Uh, Chuck Smith in his commentary said this. He said, there, there are three uh, primary false gods in the Babylonian culture. Okay, Three pr- primary f- uh, false gods. Uh, number one was, was Molech, number two was, was Mammon, and number three uh, uh, was Baal. Uh, Molech was the god of pleasure, okay? Um, Mammon was the false god of, of riches and power. Baal was the false god of intellect, right? And so we see these three, three main false gods. And our, 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 our cult, and you, you can go ahead and take the slide down, we're, we're good, we won't, we won't have any more slides from now on. Thank you so much. And... Our culture still deals with these three false gods. These three heads of of distraction, of confusion, of of sin. Mammon, Molech, Baal. They would would offer sacrifices to these false gods. They would fashion images and statues and and, uh, graven images of these false gods. And and, uh, they would... They would even kill children to one of these gods in particular, Molech. It was, it was vile and wicked and evil. And we can kind of look back at that thousands of years ago because it was such a barbaric time and we go, man, thank God we moved on from that. We haven't. We haven't. In fact, I, I know we haven't because I've driven on I-45 in the south of Houston, I've driven an I-45 north in Houston, and I passed this big old black building that Planned Parenthood built in, and it's 
it is a factory. I mean, it's, it's, it's the Holocaust. I mean, like, I, I've, I've been to Auschwitz. And people go to Auschwitz, and they, they weep, and they cry. And all of a sudden, you put an Auschwitz with glass and steel, and it's got offices, and it's got a receptionist in the front. And they, and they position it next to a major university and next to a, 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 a poor socioeconomic area as well. And they were to put the building. We, we, are, we are worshiping the God of Molech, the God of pleasure. It says I can do what I want, when I want. And then I can just rid myself of, of the consequences of those decisions. Now, that's, that's a dramatic example, okay? Abortion is a dramatic example. But, but and, and, and if, if you've had abortion in this place, that's why we're here. Because God loves us and he, he forgives us. But I, I, I'm talking about a culture that says it's not a big deal and in fact is celebrating it now. Literally celebrating it online. Uh, there, we haven't changed. The world's still sinful. The world's still worshiping the God of pleasure. The Molech, the, 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 the world's still worshiping the false god of power and riches. Man, and the, word, the world is still worshiping the god of intellect, Baal. Let's, 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 uh, this, this first scripture here is amazing. The first two verses. It says here that, that, that these gods, they bow down. The idols are on beasts and on livestock. These things you carry are born as burdens and weary beasts. God is saying to us this morning that false gods are burdens. And you go, yeah, that's obvious. Duh. Let's move on. Well, it's not so obvious to us during our week. Because we might not be doing those dramatic things, those things that we look at and go, oh, abortions or, or murder or, uh, or cheating on your wife or those really, really obvious things that are hard to hide, Okay? But in our hearts, we worship these gods on a continual basis, and we, we prop them up and we carry them. See, there, there, there's just this, there's this crazy things about idols. They're really heavy. They're, they're, they're made of heavy metal. And, 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 and they're also made of a metal that, that's finite. It's a finite resource. A lot of these, they, they were melt, made out of gold and silver. But how many you know gold and silver run out? They're not a, they're not a sustainable resource. There's only so much of it in the world. I, I felt the Lord just speak to me as I was studying this. He said, Jack, he said, the, the, the gods that you have to carry around in your arms, the gods of pleasure, the gods of power, the gods of, of intellect and human reasoning, all those gods, they're heavy, they weigh you down, and they run out. We have a culture that we've, we've carried these false gods. We've carried them around with us. Uh, pleasure. Uh, you know, once again, we, we, it, might, it might not be the, the dramatic thing, the, the, the dramatic thing that you think of. Uh, it could be a TV show. It, it, it could be, it could be social media. Oh, and, oh yeah, whoa, whoa, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We're getting there. Social media. It, but, and this, this is an amazing thing. Christians, we, we talk about the problem of pain all the time, you know, with, with atheists that, that kind of say, like, that's the problem, you know, like, how could an evil God allow, um, you know, bad things to happen? But, but really, what, one of the biggest problems that atheists have is the problem of pleasure. And I posted this week, Ravi Zacharias did an amazing message on this called The Problem of Pleasure. The world doesn't know what to do with pleasure. They just keep gorging themselves. They have, they have no framework for how to, how to deal with pleasure. Christianity offers the way to enjoy things. God is a God of pleasure. He created things to be enjoyed, to be tasted, beautiful things. And, 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 and religion says, oh, everything is bad. Let me hide myself in a closet and don't eat anything, don't touch anything, don't look at anything. But, but we're, we're called in this, it, we're, we get confused sometimes because the Bible says to make ourselves, uh, pull ourselves away from the world. 
Don't be contaminated by the world. The, the word of God uh, calls us to do that. But then at the same time, it says, go into the world. Go save the world. And we're like, well, Lord, what should I do? <laughs> Jesus died for the world. And he said, but don't touch the world. Don't become like the world. What is he telling us? He, and, and that's always going to be a, 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 a mystery, a balance we're going to have to deal with until he comes back and perfects everything. Let me tell you something. There's a way to walk in the world, to enjoy what God has created without it destroying you. And the key is this. The key is, have you made it a God? Are you worshiping it? Or are you simply just enjoying it? Every sin, every sin in the world is, a tw- is something good that got twisted. Everything. There's no bad things that exist in the world. There's only good things that the enemy twisted. Right? And, and, and so, so uh, uh, how many, sex is not bad. The enemy twisted. But there's a bunch of bad versions of it throughout the world. Money is not bad. God created wealth and resources. But there's a bunch of twisted versions of it in the world that are evil, that are bad. And so, what is God, what God's, what's God calling us to? He's saying, he's telling us here, he's saying, you need to be a counterculture like we talked about uh, last week. You're an alternate Baytown. We, we need to be a city on the hill that shows the world what does it look like to not have to carry these gods around, to not have to be weighed down by these idols, to model freedom for the world. He's, he invites us to this. And I was talking to Luna about this uh, yesterday. It, it doesn't mean you got to be perfect. It, it doesn't mean you can be vulnerable. And, and, and be real, but at the same time showing that, that you have one Lord. You, you, you don't have to worship all of these idols and live for them. Uh, pleasure, power, and riches. The, the God of pleasure makes you dissatisfied. How many know when, 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 you, when you begin to worship at the altar of, of Molech, uh, uh, it only leaves you dissatisfied? You have to go back and do more to get the same hit the next time. And you have to go back and do a little bit more to get the same hit next time. And before you know, you're not even enjoying it anymore. The thing you went to for pleasure, it it now makes you numb. The only way you can understand real pleasure is to go to the one true God. Uh, Mammon, power and riches, the same thing. Uh, the, 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 The false God of power and riches makes you weak and poor. The false God of power and riches makes you weak and poor. There are plenty of people out in the world who have, have tons of money and they're so insecure. Right? Now, I know, I know some wealthy people who, who, who they love the Lord and they're not insecure, but how, how many of you know, you've seen it. They, they, they gave their lives to power. They gave their lives to, to wealth and they had the thinnest skin in the world. The biggest egos. They, they, they lose sleep at night. It's like a dragon sitting on their pile of money, terrified that someone's going to try to come and take take it away from them. And so what they went to for power, what they went to for riches, actually has made them weak. It's made them pitiful. Do you see how these false gods, they, they tempt us, and they literally turn us into the very opposite thing we went to them for. The, the God of power and riches makes you weak and poor. The, the God of intellect makes you a fool. But they worshipped Baal. He was the God of intellect, of human reasoning. And you go, well, I'm not an intellectual. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You may not be into like books or scholarly, th- scholarly things, but all, but all of us have a temptation to worship at the altar of Baal, to worship at the altar of our, our, our human intellect. And l- let me tell you, and I, I, I deal with this because I like to read. I love to study. I'm like a fact finder. So I have to be careful to, to, uh, to make sure I'm doing this in, in the, with the right heart in the right way. So it could be books for you, but... It could be this for you. Intellect says that doesn't just mean dusty old books and philosophy. It also just means information. Maybe you're addicted to information. Maybe you're addicted to what's going on in the world and, and having to understand what, uh, what so-and-so is doing and, 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 and what Miss, Miss Bossy Pants and, and Busy Body is doing on the other side of town and, and you're obsessed. And, and what, if, what, what if the enemy was clever enough to, to make a device that, that not only mixes information, but mixes it with pleasure. So you could actually worship the God of Baal and Molech at the same time. 
And then you could, you could, all, then you could worship mammon too because you could figure out a way to, to get rich up on here. St. Saint Augustine said this. He said, I'm paraphrasing him. He said, when you become a Christian, God doesn't, God doesn't remo- remove your desires. He reorders your desires. This thing's not bad. We're going to use it to change the world. We're going to use it to preach the gospel. Money's not bad. Uh, 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 pleasurable things aren't bad. Let me tell you something. But worshiping at the altar of these gods will kill you. It will destroy you. It will wear you out. You were not made for it. You were designed to worship the one true God. So we're going to talk about just five quick things. So, so th- th- those, are the, those are the gods we had to carry. Those are the false gods. But let's talk about the God who carries us. False gods have to be carried. The one true God carries you. He carries you today. He's here for you. In this chapter, we see five, uh, um, five attributes of the God who carries us. Uh, number one, he sustains. Number two, he saves. Number three, he speaks. Number four, he surprises. And number five, he's sovereign. So he sustains, he saves, he speaks, he surprises, and he's sovereign. Now, number one, he sustains. In verse uh, three, In 4, he says, says, listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been born by me from your birth. That is one of the most beautiful scriptures in all the Bible. He said, you've been born by me. I've been holding you since you were a baby. I've been holding you from from before, uh, uh, the Bible says that that before you were ever created. He, He formed you. He knitted you in your mother's womb. You were his idea before you were your parents' idea. He, he's been carrying you since you were a baby. I, I, I don't know about you, but that's, that's amazing to me. He says, I'm carrying you. He, he sustains us. He says, I've born you from before your birth. I've carried you from your womb. And even to your old age, I'm he. And your gray hairs, I will carry you. Can I tell you something? You would not be walking around right now if God didn't love you. Do you know that? If God stopped loving you, your body would collapse. The atoms in your body would cease to exist. He literally is sustaining you. Everybody on the planet, those who are far from God, terrorists, all of them, they're, they're, they literally, their bodies exist because God's word is holding them together. He loves you. He loves you this morning. He's carrying you. He's bearing you in his arms. He sustains you. I don't know about you, but that, that, that comforts me today. That he sustains. Before I go to, to the next one, um, as I was praying this week, I was just uh, convicted. I was talking to mom about it in the car this morning. Um, you know, growing up in church, we can have this list of, of beliefs, right beliefs. And how many of you, you know, you do this. It's like you pull out your wallet and you go, you know, and they all tumble out. It's like, there's this word, there's this word, there's this word. There's this doctrine. That, I know God is good. I know he's a good father. Yeah, I figured that one out back in 2008. That was good. And then... Um, I know that the gospel is really important and Jesus saved me. I figured that out when I was a kid. And da 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 And we believe all these things. And, and we, we genuinely believe them. Like we believe that they're true. We, we know that they're true. We know that God wants to heal us. We know that God wants to use us. But oftentimes our, our frustration in life is, 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 this, is because of this gap between what we believe and how we behave. We believe these amazing things. We know they're true. We know they're in our hearts. And, 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 we, and we really desire to, to live like they're true. But then there's this gap in the middle. We get frustrated. Like, God, why can't I just get it together? And, and we beat ourselves and the enemy comes in. Let me tell you something. That's why, that's why we need him to sustain us. You can't do this alone. You can't just believe something, snap your fingers, and make it, make it happen. 
And we're going to talk about our role, our response in a little bit. But, but you have to, every single day, we have to say, God, you're my sustainer, God. I can't just wake up and be super ninja Christian Jack. Come on. But I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ. It's amazing. Nothing's impossible. Through Christ. Not through you. He, he's your sustainer. He'll carry you. He's been carrying you before you were born. He will carry you until you die. He is faithful. This is our amazing God. All the false gods, the stuff, you, the stuff we worship throughout the week, they don't care about you. They're designed to kill you. You have to lug them around throughout your day. Imagine having to carry around an eight-foot golden statue of Baal throughout the week. You get a little tired, wouldn't you? You get a little frustrated. Man, that sounds a lot like our week sometimes. But if we remind ourselves that, just leave that thing on the side and say, God, I thank you that you're carrying me. I don't have to carry you. You're carrying me. You're strong. Number two, he saves. Uh, verse four. He said, I I'll carry you. And then he said, I, I will save you. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we, we, we come in and give our lives to Jesus and we're like, man, awesome, good, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. Woo! Oh, no hell, I'm good to go. And that's salvation to us, right? That, that, that we've been saved to go to heaven. And that, that's amazing. That's really, really good news. That's wonderful, okay? But you still need a Savior. You, see, you need a Savior every moment. I don't know about you, but I, I need Jesus, the Savior, I need him to come in and save me and rescue me every day. I told you this before, my, my favorite prayer is help. <laughs> and Savior Jesus, he comes and he saves me from stupid things that, that I would do. Or, or he saves me from just stuff that's happening to me that are out, out of my control. Or he saves me from anger. Or he saves me from fear. He, he is your Savior every moment. He never stops being your Savior. This is the one true God. The real God, he, he saves. He sustains. He gives from you. He doesn't take from you. He gives to you. He leaves you better than he found you. Number one, he sustains. Number two, he saves. Number three, he speaks. In uh, verse seven, uh, we see, he said, he's talking about them with the, with the false gods. He says, they lift, the, to, they lift it to their shoulders. They carry it. They set the false god in its place and it stands there. This false song, they said it cannot move from its place. If anyone cries to it, it does not answer or save him from his trouble. And then we say, well, that's so silly. I can't imagine standing in front of a statue and yelling at it. We do it every day. We get in trouble. We get frustrated. We go to YouTube. Find something that will distract me, or, or, or let, let, me, let me run to this relationship. Let me, let me run to them. Let me, let me go talk to them. Maybe they'll, they'll have the answers. Maybe this will have the answer. And, and we're getting information, but we're not getting truth. It's like talking to a statue. That statue cannot speak to you what you need to hear. And God is saying, he's saying, that they talk to these statues, and the statues don't talk back. He said, hey, look over here. I'm the God who talks back. Uh, Michael Culliano says this. He says, this is, this is an amazing thing about Jesus. He says, it's pretty wild. He says, when you say his name, he, he, he turns his head and looks at you. When you say his name, our God turns his head and looks at you. Now, some of you, that might freak you out. C.S. Lewis talked about this. He said, uh, he said we're, we're fine with this God in the sky who just, oh, yeah, hey, God, you know. But we, we don't want a God who, who pulls back on the other end of the string, who, who is there. Come on, come on he's, he's alive. He's speaking to you. This is not an idol you're talking to. But you need to run to the one true God who will speak to you. He'll talk to you. How, how does he talk to you? He talks to you through his, through, through his word, through his people through his spirit, and through his creation. Four, four things. Uh, uh, he talks to us through, through his creation, through his spirit, through his people, and through his word. 
So, so, so go to the word of God. Amen? Uh, be in the word of God every day. And we, we take that for granted, but we're not doing it enough. And, and as I said last week, and so by the grace of God, open the word of God. Read something you don't understand. It's okay. The spirit of God understands it in you. Your, your spirit, man, is inside of you. That it gets it. It's absorbing it. And, and, then, and then Google some specific scriptures you need. Don't, don't get too fancy and religious about this thing. Don't say, well, I have to, in my plan today, I have to read Ezekiel. Read Ezekiel. Get it in your spirit. Come on, do both. All right, can we just be real this morning? And then, and then look up some scriptures you need to encourage yourself and speak them over you, amen? So be reading through the word and, and then, and then uh, don't, don't be all stuffy and religious about it. Man, go to those scriptures you need uh, to feel encouragement as well. The word of God, the people of God. I, I was hanging out with Luna yesterday. I was getting so encouraged with Luna. He didn't even know he was encouraging me. He was encouraging me. We need to be around the people of God. We talked about this last week. That's how God speaks to us. He, he, sometimes, sometimes we ask for a word from the Lord and he sends us a person. And we're like, no, Lord, but I want a word. He's like, no, I'm going to send you to Sister Sally Pants, and she is going to, she's going to give you a word. But I don't want to get it from Mr. Sally Pants. Miss Sally Pants. Mr. Sally Pants. We're not that kind of church. <laughs> Moving on. God speaks to you. He's the God who speaks. And we're, we're, we're to listen to him. He's talking. He's speaking. You say, well, I don't hear his voice. Man, just, just, keep, just keep being faithful in it. I promise you you'll hear him. I promise you, you will. Uh, the, the reason I, I know Whitney's voice, uh, I'll say one more thing on this and then I'll move on. We, we have to train ourselves to be able to understand people and to be able to really hear them. How, how many of you, like you've, uh, oh, this is, this is a good example. There's been times where I've been in a room with people, with my mom's there, and there's like a young person who doesn't know her well. And, uh, and they're being kind of cocky and kind of, I've seen this before, this is, it's hilarious. And they have no clue by her, by her mannerisms and by the things she's trying to say to change the subject that they, they need to change real quick or they're about to have a come to Jesus. They don't know how to read what she's saying. Why? Because they don't know her. I do, I'm like, oh dude, please, please stop that. Stop, 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 because it's about to get real here if you don't change what you're doing, and he's just oblivious, he's like, uh, you know, he doesn't know her, so he doesn't know how to really listen to really what's going on, really what she's thinking, but I know her. When we spend time with God, we, we, we know, we know what they're saying. When, when, Whitney, when Whitney walks in the room frustrated, you know, she's, she's quiet. So she's not real loud about things she's frustrated about, but I can tell. I can, I can see it because I know her. It's the same with God. If you'll just spend time with him out of faithfulness, just, I, mean, I don't understand this passage, but I'm just going to read it. and I, I'm just going to pray, and I, I don't, you haven't, you're not knocking me over right now, and I don't feel anything, but I'm just going to be faithful. I'm just going to spend time with you. I'm telling you what, if you'll, if you'll just be faithful in that, by the grace of God, God will amaze you. One day you'll be walking around, and you'll hear something. In your heart. Like his voice sleep in your heart. Or you'll see a face and, and God will say, I love that person. Tell, tell that person I love him. And, and, all, and all of a sudden, you're hearing his voice. Amen. He's the God who speaks. Uh, for he's the God who surprises. Uh, verse, verse 5. Uh, in, in, in chapter 46, says, it says, um, sorry. Verse 5. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be alike? I, this is God we're talking about. He's basically saying, I'm not like anybody you've met. See, we, we get kind of, especially Christians who've been Christians for, you know, a little while, uh, or a year for that matter. You know, we, we can get real familiar with God as, as a father. I talked to Whitney about this the other night. I'm a little concerned that, that we, we're, we're losing our fear of the Lord and our mystery of God. Of going, man, this is God we're talking about here. God. He's, 
He's more than you think he is. He's better than you think he is. He's more powerful than you think he is. And, and there's things that we don't understand, but, but, but God's saying, you don't know anybody like me. I'm really amazing. I love you a whole lot. But, but there's going to be some things you don't understand. You're still going to have to trust me because I'm not like you. I am God. He's completely other, completely separate. That's what holy means. He's holy, other. So he surprises us. He wants to surprise you today. Hey, there, there, there's something that you don't know about him that he wants to reveal to you this week. Uh, or, or, or a deeper... Uh, a deeper meaning of something that you already understand, but you need to understand it deeper. He wants to reveal himself. He's going to surprise you today. Uh, and number five, he's sovereign. Ver- verse 10 uh, says this. He says, uh, I-, I declare from, the, from the, the end of the beginning, from the ancient times, things not yet done. My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish my purpose. Man, isn't that awesome? Isn't that cool this morning? To know that that God is going, God is going to be God. He's going to accomplish his purpose this morning. He's going to accomplish his purpose. I'll close with this. Uh, how How do we experience this God, the God who's sovereign, the God who sustains us, the God who's just amazing and wonderful, this one true God? Uh, three three quick things for you to apply this week. Number one, we, we recall. Number two, we respond. Number three, we receive. Uh, one, we, we recall. We recall what he's done. Uh, um, in, in verse six, uh, verse eight, he says this. He says, remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. He's saying, remember. Remember what I've done for you. Recall it to mind. Man, every day we need to be recalling what God has done. Recalling what God has said. The enemy distracts us. He, he, uh, his greatest tactic, and, and, and hear me when I say that, his greatest tactic is to distract you. Uh, as C.S. Lewis in his book, uh, The Screwtape Letters, it's basically like this old, old demon uh, writing letters to a younger demon, trying to train him how to uh, deceive this guy. And, and it's an amazing book. And, uh, and so this, younger, uh, this older demon is basically saying, he's kind of bragging about... Uh, uh, how he operates. And he said, yeah, I remember, I remember this, this, this one time that uh, uh, there was this man, he was in the British library and he was reading and all of a sudden he said the enemy was on his shoulder. That They call God the enemy. And uh, he said all of a sudden God, the, the enemy was, was, was at his shoulder and I could tell God, was, I, he said it's so frustrating we can never hear what God says. He said that's incredibly frustrating but I could tell that God was doing his thing on this man and speaking to him. And he said, so immediately, he said, I, I got my wits. And he says, I was quick on this man's shoulder. And I said, hey, it's lunchtime. Are you hungry? And, and the man goes, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. It's time for lunch. And, and, and the demon said, I could tell God, God responded to him and said, hey, this is more important than lunch. And, and the man said, well, that's, that's true. And he said, I, but he said, I was quick and I was sharp and I was, I was smart. He said, I got in the shoulder. I said, yes, yes, it is, it is very important. Way too important to do on an empty stomach. He said, so, so this man said, oh, that's, that's sensible. He said, you know, this is very important. I, I need to get lunch first before I, before I talk to God because this is so important. I, I need to have. And so he said, I got the man up and the man began walking out, out of the British Museum to go get his lunch. And he said, I, I showed him a paper boy selling papers and I, I showed him a red bus with number seven on it. And he said, he said, by the time he was halfway down the street, he was mine. He had forgotten. See, the enemy's clever. He's not trying, he's not gonna try to argue or debate with God. He knows he'll get whipped. He's, but he'll distract you. you you'll, you'll feel a conviction on your heart. Uh, 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 and, and, and he'll just get you so consumed with life that you'll forget to remember what God's done. To remember who God is. It's so important, God, for, guys, for us to, to, to be careful what we're listening to and paying attention to. Keep focused on the Lord. And I'm preaching to myself here big time. Focused on God because the enemy is going to try to distract you. We need to recall what God is doing. Remind ourselves. This is why we're here. This is what we're made for. This is who God is. This is what he says to me. I'm a child of God. God is good. Write it on your mirror. 
write it in your car, be playing it in your car, reminding yourself because the enemy is going to try to distract you. We recall. Number two, we respond. When, when, we, when God says to do something, just do it. Just do it. Like, like don't, don't like wait. Uh, um, you know, have you guys ever seen someone who uh, is cliff jumping? And, and they're, they're the person who's scared to jump off the cliff. And everyone's just like, jump, jump, jump in the water. You can do it. You can do it. And you know, every second they wait on that cliff, they're less likely to jump. And you're like, please just do it. You want to just go push them off. You know what I'm saying? I saw a video on Facebook this week of some guy just going like this, dancing at the edge. I'm like, dude, you're going to hurt yourself. Just jump. But a lot of times, God will tell us to do something. Just do it. You know, he, he, he reminds you to, to call that, that friend that, that you need to reconcile with. And you feel it. It's like the man in that library. You feel God convicting you and, and telling you to do something. And you're like, oh, not now. Uh, that, that's, that's a really important conversation. I, I need to do that conversation later, you know, when the kids are down. And then when the kids are down, you, you don't do it. Do it now. When God says something, when God, when God moves in your heart, respond. Do it now. Do it now. And, and you pick up the phone, you're not even prepared to call him. You call him. Hey, hey, hey man, how's it going? Hey. Hey, uh, I just feel like I needed to call you. You know, I, I know we had that thing a few years ago, and I just want to say I'm sorry, and, uh, you know, okay. Okay, man. Um, uh, all right, uh, bye. Okay, bye. Look, can I tell you something? That call you made, God is up there going, yes, yes. Angels are jumping. Uh, they're doing backflips and having a party. Not that you had revival on the phone, but that you were obedient. So many times we think that something amazing has to happen when we're obedient to God. And that's what holds us back from being obedient because we think it's got to be spectacular every time. And God just wants your obedience. He brings the increase. Just jump. Just do it. Just respond. Recall, respond. And finally, uh, receive. Uh, verse, verse 13. This is amazing. After all this, after all this stuff, he's, he's telling us, kind of rebu rebuking and encouraging and all this. He, he ends it with this. And this is wonderful. He says... I bring near my righteousness. It is not far off. And my salvation will not delay. I will put salvation in Zion, for Israel is my glory. This is what he's telling him. He's saying, listen, I know you're struggling. I, I, I know, and I know you, you want to please me, and, and I, I'm reminding you how to, 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 to recall what I've told you, to respond to what I'm telling you. He said, but let me tell you something. You can't do anything unless you receive what I'm giving you. I'm sending a man named Jesus. He's going to die for you. He's going to save you from your sins. And not only is he going to save you from your sins, uh, he is going to be your righteousness. Uh, the worst thing I can do today is, as a preacher is to send you out with a to-do list of things for you to do today for God. That's not the gospel. It's not. You know what the gospel is? The gospel is saying, Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you're the sufficient one. And, and, and I am so loved, God. I am so loved by you. I, I'm in a relationship with you. I'm so loved by you. You are so amazing that I can't help but be obedient. I, I'm, I'm going to step out I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those risks and take those chances and I'm going to stumble and fall, but that's my way to worship you. That's my way to thank you. That's not, way, that's not my way to save myself. You can't save yourself this morning. God, God said here, after all that, after all of that, he said, listen, I'm coming to save you. You think it's you, but it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is here to set you free today. And, and God, um, as I was praying this week and, uh, on this, I, I felt this, God convict me of saying, Jack, if you'll remember who I am, if you'll just remember who I am, the, the grace to be obedient will come. Guys, we just get so distracted with life. We get so distracted with stuff. 
We're going to die at some point, a long way off. But it'll get here quicker than we think. And we're going to stand before God. And the Bible says that we're, our works are going to be judged before God. And, and the stuff that didn't matter, he said it's wood, hay, and stubble. It's just going to burn up like that. He said the stuff that does matter, it, it's, the precious, it's the precious stones and gems that won't get burned up in the fire. I want to live for that. How do we live for that? We respond to Jesus. We run to Jesus every day. We let him save us every single day. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, you're going to hell when you wake up and you got to get saved to go to heaven every morning. That's not what I'm talking about. You're born again, you're saved, you're good. You're in his hands. What I'm talking about is letting him, letting him change you, letting his grace in, receiving what Jesus has done for you. Stand up with me. We love you, Jesus. We love you this morning. I... Uh, If we acted on one-tenth of what we believe, the world would be transformed. Man, we believe God's good. We believe he can, he can heal the sick. We believe he can move. We believe he can touch lives. And, and you know what God's, God's asking from you? He's asking you to just respond, to just jump. And what I'm telling you this morning, you can't respond and you can't jump without knowing who Jesus is. Right? And, 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 and we, that Jesus helps us to take that leap, helps us to respond. I'm telling you what, when we do it with him, we will, we'll change the world. There's a world that is desperate out there. Desperate. They're worshiping these gods, and they, they, they think these false gods are going to give them, because them, they just don't know. They don't know. And I, I, I was grieved, you know, all these people talking about I didn't watch the service, but Aretha Franklin uh, at the service and Ariana Grande sang, and I, I, I saw a picture of her, her, her skirt was shorter than people wanted it to be, and that was the topic. I'm like, she doesn't, she's, she's not walking with the Lord. Like, like for all of I don't, I don't know what shore she is in her faith, but I do know she's a, she's a secular pop singer. We can't expect people to know our protocols and all that stuff. Come on. She's there singing at this funeral and, and for all I know, exposed to Christians for, for a little bit. And that's going to be our response. Our dress was too short. God, help us. We can't expect people in the world to just have it all together. They don't know God. We need to model Jesus for them. Model love for them. Go rescue them. Shows them what it looks like. Say, I, I, I'm a mess. Jesus saved me. He can save you too. Come on. If you can just change one, if you can tell one person that, that this week. Come on, guys. We're, we're, we're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before God. With every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. If, if, if you've never given your life to Jesus, or, or if you're just not sure about your salvation today, if you say, man, if I, if I die today, I, I don't know where I would go. I don't, I don't know if I would go to heaven. Wherever your heart is today, if you want to respond to Jesus, if you want to commit your life to Christ this morning, oh, I just want to give you an opportunity right now. Jesus loves you so much. He's here to save you. He's calling you to turn from your old life and to turn to him. He'll turn your life around. He'll amaze you. That's you this morning. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, all over the place, I just want you to raise your hand right now and say, that's me. I, I, I want to give my life to Jesus. I, I want to make him Lord of my life. Raise your hands right now all over, the, all over the place. Thank you, Jesus. See your hands. Anyone else this morning, raise your hands to the Lord. Say, I want to give my life to Jesus. We're going to pray with you right now. And God's going to change your life. He's going to change your life. He's going to bring you into the family of God. And right, right now, I want you to repeat this prayer with us. Uh, but just pray from your heart. It's not about this prayer. It's just about you calling out to God. The, the Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, Jesus, you shall be saved. Amen. Your sins will be forgiven. You'll have a clean slate before the Lord. He's going to be your righteousness. Not you trying to make it all happen. He's going to be your righteousness now. 
And he's, he's going he's gonna to show you what it looks like to live like him now. It's amazing. If that's you, I want you to, to pray with us right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I confess that I have sinned. I, I'm a sinner. You say in your word that I was born a sinner. But you came to save me, to change me from the inside out. And right now, I ask you to come and be the Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior. I love you. I give my life to you. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. Now fill me up, Holy Spirit, right now. Fill me with your presence right now. Touch my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, I, I, I want this morning, and we're going to dismiss in a little bit, but, but when, when we dismiss, I pray that you would just be uh, mindful. If you just need a touch from God this morning, I, uh, I, I, I have a hard time communicating what's in my spirit this morning in my heart. I... I I long, I desperately long to see a people who have laid our lives down for Jesus. And uh, as I was praying this week, uh, reading this, I, I just I was on my face before the Lord, and uh, like literally like laying on my face. And I don't always do that, but but I, I did that at that time, and and I was just resting in His presence. I, there's not a whole lot I could say. I, I I wasn't chatterboxing. I was just. Man, I just read that chapter and I just said, God, I was just looking upon God, just being amazed at God, going, God, you're just, this is so much more than what we're allowing it to be. You're bigger. And so I was just in awe of him. I was in awe of him. And I was just laying before him. And, and, and I felt him say to me, I said, Jack, this is what it looks, to lo- looks like to lay your life down. I wasn't striving I wasn't flexing my spiritual muscles, trying to make things happen for God. I was laying there before him saying, God, I'm yours. You are amazing. I am yours. That's what a laid down life looks like. It looks like rest. It looks like saying, God, I, I can't do it on my own. Some of you just need to, need to give up this morning. Uh, your own striving and trying and saying, God, you're amazing. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Right now, we just want to open up the, the altar this morning for you to just Come and spend some time in the presence of God. If you just feel God stirring in your life, saying, God, I want to lay my life down. I, 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 just from a place of rest, saying, God, I want to give you everything. If you feel the Lord stirring in your hearts this morning, I just want to invite you down right now. I, I, I want you all to turn off this altar light this morning just to have some, some time for, for prayer this morning. I want to invite you right now to just come down here and spend some time.